Welcome back to Chemical Bonding. In this section, we're going to look at polarity and how we can tell if the bonds are polar and if the bonds in a polar compound, it, well, if the, if the bonds are polar, then we look at them and see if they cancel each other out or if they will form a polar molecule. First, though, we're going to look at how we represent these shapes. Since we're usually drawing on a flat piece of paper, we have to have a way to, um, to communicate what we're trying to say. So what is this shape? And so since I can't do three-dimensional on a flat piece of paper, I have this convention of drawing things. So by convention, you're going to have the central atom in the plane of the paper. Then you're going to put as many atoms as possible in the same plane and indicate those with the straight line. If any atoms are sticking out in front of the page, you use a solid wedge. And for any atoms that are behind the plane, you use the hatched wedge. So there's your hatched wedge, there's your solid. And so here you can see um, just different representations. If they're all just lines, that means they're all in the same plane of the page, but um, you see your hatched or your um, completed wedge, and that shows you just, so you can kind of get some feel for um, which direction these are, because remember, they're not all flat. So some of them are sticking out, some of them are coming back into it. All right, so for a molecule to be polar, it's got to have polar bonds, okay? Um, so there's got to be a difference in electronegativity between the two bonded atoms, and then it, they will have measurable dipole moments, that is, more than 0.4 difference. They also must have an unsymmetrical shape, so they can't be a symmetrical shape. They can't be a square. That's a symmetrical shape. They can't be a triangle. They can't be a tetrahedron, whatever. Okay. Um, polarity affects the intermolecular forces. So it's important that we know if something is, is boil, sorry, boiling, is polar or not, because it would have different properties such as boiling point. Also though, and probably most important, is will it dissolve in water? Um, water is nonpolar, okay? It's a nonpolar solvent. And so in order for a molecule to be able to dissolve in water, it also has to be nonpolar. So if it's a polar molecule, then it's not water soluble, okay? The non-bonding pairs, the lone pairs, affect the polarity because they're doing this strong pull and they pull more of that negative area to one end of the molecule. And so that's what causes this polar or this dipole moment. So when you look at hydrogen and chlorine, chlorine has a lot more electrons and chlorine tends to pull all more electrons towards it. And so that is going to be a polar bond because you, you'll have low electron density for a partial positive charge on one end and the higher electron density for a partial negative charge on the other end. And so this is uh, going to result in a polar molecule because the electrons are not evenly distributed. Now, if you look at carbon dioxide, okay, the bonds between carbon and oxygen are polar, okay? So these are polar because um, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, but since they're both going opposite directions and they're equal in the distance, they cancel each other out. And so this one would not be polar. So that's how you have to, to kind of look at it and see. And the other clue is um, it's linear. 
So when it's linear, which is, um, which meets our criteria for um, symmetry, then it's not going to be polar as well. So since the dipoles are exactly the same on each side, it's not polar. In water, you have an oxygen and then you have two hydrogens. And the difference in polarity is, I mean, in electronegativity is quite a bit. So most of the pull is going towards the oxygen. In this case, that um, effect is additive because they're both going towards the same direction. And so that's going to create this possible, this, um, partial negative on one end and partial positive on the other end. So that would be polar. That's why water is polar.